to be Bowater paid nearly $50 million in salaries, $90 million in spending on goods and services in the region. Then there are the other economic spin-offs. It is a big loss for the region, a loss to the, uh, the provincial government says it is working diligently to help this community overcome. Now, the Minister of uh, Human Resources and Employment, Susan Sullivan, as well as uh, Business Minister Paul Orham, were at the gates of Abitibi Bowater today when the uh, company's big paper machines came to a halt. Now, that was uh, mostly a photo op, obviously, but the government is working with local officials to try and find ways to soften the economic impact of the uh, paper mill shutdown. We haven't heard anything yet about what the government uh, plans to do, but uh, the Human Resources Minister is here now to take a closer look at some of the challenges being faced by this community, some of the challenges that lie ahead. Susan Sullivan, thanks for joining us tonight. No problem. Are you any more optimistic tonight than, say, you were weeks ago when Abitibi Bowater first announced that they were going to uh, close this mill? Well, I think what we have to recognize, first of all, is that, first of all, it's a very sad day for the region and for the workers and, and for the people of Grand Falls, Windsor and surrounding areas who have built a culture and a history around this paper mill. So we have to accept that, first of all, and we have to realize that this is a time of grieving. This is a time when we have to accept that inevitable that we hoped would never come. In terms of the optimism, uh, it's, it's a difficult piece. We do face challenges. There are downturns economically that are happening not just here in Grand Falls, Windsor or here in this province, but they're happening nationally and globally, and we're not immune from those challenges. Having said that, however, we are working very, very diligently to make a difference here in the area. How are you working? Let's, uh, let's uh, put a picture on this. What exactly is going on as we speak to try and help this region overcome this, uh, this shutdown? Okay, two-pronged approach. Uh, and again, our concern always will be first and foremost for those displaced workers, those workers today who rolled off that last roll of paper. Yeah. And so we are doing a whole lot around the, the business of employability skills and getting them reskilled if we can, transitioning them to new jobs, uh, transitioning them to other parts of the industrial area to see, you know, how we can find the employment that they're looking for. So that's our, our focus for the workers, and we'll continue to do that and work on individualized plans for them. The other prong of this is the economic development piece, and Minister Sean Skinner, of course, is the lead on our task force. We have seven ministers who are working, and we are, are trying to identify possibilities economically in this area. So we've met with many of the strategic economic development uh, corporations and partners here. We've had stakeholder meetings. We have had proposals that we have entertained from businesses from around this province, from outside of this province. Where, so where do those files sit right now? I mean, you've had a number of proposals. How, how far forward are they being pushed? Where do they sit? Right now, what we're doing is the due diligence piece to ensure, first of all, the viability of the options that come forward to us, because that's an extremely important piece. Government doesn't rush to put money in unless we know that it's viable and that it is sustainable. So we're doing our due diligence around those pieces, and we're also making sure that if we're going to use, as some of the proposals are asking, the resources, the natural resources in this area, that they have to be for the good of the people. So it's, it's a matter of making sure that we do our homework. A lot of the guys who worked at this mill were making upwards of $70,000 a year. Are those days gone? Well, we're not sure. Th those are pieces that we will have to explore as we're going. There's no question they have made a very good living here in Grand Falls, Windsor. And I say they, but, you know, some of my family members have been involved over the years as well. Very good living was, here, was made here in Grand Falls, Windsor for over 100 years. We're, we're doing our best to ensure that what we bring in here will we'll bring some, some good salaries in here as well, but that, that's a piece that remains to be seen. So, Susan Sullivan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. No problem. Thank you. Susan Sullivan telling us that the work is going on, due diligence, working on proposals, trying to get this uh, region back on its feet. We'll have more on the uh, mill shutdown here at uh, Grand Falls, Windsor, a little later in the broadcast. For now, I'm Glenn Carter in Grand Falls, Windsor. Fred Lynn, it's back to you.